this section is going to be dealing mostly with how we utilize DNS. And what will happen is after we kind of get some good coverage on how we use DNS to look up websites and other things, we will then dive into a section where I will actually show you how we can take advantage of that to extract information from DNS to help us in our pen test or if you know you were a malicious hacker in your actual hack. So let's go ahead and take a look at a common use for DNS. Now, as usual, we're gonna be using my friend Wireshark here to illustrate what's happening uh, when we do these things. And the first thing that I'm gonna do here is actually open up a browser and I'm gonna going to go to yahoo.com. So just that action of putting yahoo.com or whatever it may be into your browser, it actually caused your machine to do something called a DNS query. Now what that means is this, let's take a look at the traffic and I'm gonna stop this and basically do a filter for just DNS traffic. And then we're gonna do a further filter and say UDP contains Yahoo. So if you've ever wondered how to look for specific DNS traffic, this is a good filter to be able to do that with, right? So as we look, we can see that this is a DNS standard query for the A record for yahoo.com. So that means my machine dot four is asking 8.2, what's the A record for yahoo.com? So let's examine what an A record is. An A record is simply a small text file that says yahoo.com equals this specific IP address. That's all an A record is. So what I'm asking the DNS server is, can you give me a copy of the A record for yahoo.com? Why? Because I want to browse to that IP address. Technically, you can't actually browse yahoo.com because that's not a real thing that's reachable. What you can browse to is the IP address that is in front of and representing the domain yahoo.com or the host name www.yahoo.com. Okay, so you're asking for that mapping so that your browser can be instructed to go to that IP address. Now, as a result of that query, what we see happening next here is a query response. This is coming from a DNS server saying, hey, if you wanna to get to yahoo.com, here's how you get there. So let's drill down into the protocol tree section of Wireshark, which is the middle section, and look at what the UDP packet is. Now this is layer four. So layer one, two, three, four, that's UDP. We go into DNS and then we look at the query, which is the original ask of where our servers or our machines asking the DNS server, where is the A record for Yahoo? And then that's followed by an answer. That's the query response where the DNS server is saying, okay, if you want to get to Yahoo, here are the IP addresses that you need to go to starting with this one. You know, if that one's busy, you can go to the next one. So shortly after that, what you will find in the traffic is that my machine actually did a three-way handshake to one of those IP addresses to try to get to yahoo.com right there. So my machine.4 went out to the internet to 74.6.231.20 and did a three-way handshake to that IP address and started an SSL session to connect to Yahoo. And then that's where the certificate exchange happens, where all the SSL negotiation happens and our keys exchange, and we can set up an encrypted session. But we don't need to go that far. The point I need you to get there is this is the most frequent way that we use DNS, is to look up or resolve the IP addresses that are associated with host names. Now, Another way that we could use it is you could also do the opposite. If I could say, hey, I wanna to go to yahoo.com, what's the IP address? We could also do the opposite and say, I wanna know what domain or host this specific IP address represents. And that's called a reverse lookup. 
right? If what I showed you first, the one that we do all the time when we type yahoo.com in our browser, that's a forward lookup. Well, if we do the reverse of that, where we take the IP and say, what's the host name or the domain name that this represents, that's a reverse lookup. And that can be useful for a lot of different things as well. So let me show you one case. And we kind of looked at some of this. Uh, we'll look at some of this in the the in-map stuff. When we get to that, we'll revisit this. So if I wanted to do a reverse lookup, there are several ways to do it. But what we're going to do is first, we're going to look at a tool called Dig. Now, why I'm showing you Dig now is it helps to understand which DNS servers have which information and which ones can give you the information that you need. For example, if I did dig yahoo.com and said, give me the name servers for Yahoo, it comes back and tells me, hey, the DNS servers that are authoritative and know the most about Yahoo are these ones right here. Now, what that's for is now I might ask a more specific question to these specific DNS servers. I might say, okay, let's dig at, we're going to one of these, let's do ns1.yahoo.com and ask it about the yahoo.com domain. Let's ask it for MX or mail records, all right? And we do that and it comes back and gives us the mail servers that are responsible for mailing mail to and from Yahoo, which are these ones right here, okay? So DIG is a tool that we use a lot in pen testing because it allows us to find this type of information so that we can find out which DNS servers we need to really be probing and asking for more detailed information from. That's the, one of the primary purposes of using it. Now DIG is also very good at giving you information about domains in general. But let's take the reverse lookup option here. For example, if I, you know, I grew up in Mississippi and I'm a Mississippi State fan. So if I did dig msstate.edu, well, it comes back and gives me this A record that represents the mississippistate.edu homepage. But that may not be enough. There is a tool that I'm going to introduce you to called DNS Recon, which allows me to specify a domain with dash D. And then it does a whole DNS enumeration operation for me here. Now we can see that same A record that came back, but we can also see some other records in here for this IP address that didn't show up in the dig request. Now here's the thing. I'm going to assume that because Mississippi State owns that IP address, or at least they're leasing it, it's likely that they own more around that same IP. So how would I say, let's check other IPs around that? Well, I can tell DNS Recon to do a range and I can give it 1921 or 130.1880.1 through 254. and basically get a list of all these things. So what we just did there, that was a reverse lookup. Because remember, normally we say, here's a domain, I want the IP. What we did here is said, here's a whole range of IPs. Tell me the host names that are associated with those. And you can now take this and write it to a file. like so, and now we can cat this file. And grep out of it what's important. For example, if we wanted to look for test stuff, you know, beta things and test things, we could literally just say grep for test. And then there's all the test devices, which if I were pen testing or trying to break in here, the test devices are probably less likely to be as locked down as production devices. So these might be good first points of entry here. All right. So this is a common way that we utilize DNS to find out information about the target as we're getting ready to um, 
enumerate things and find out more about it. So don't forget about DNS recon. It's an important tool. And we'll look at some more DNS information as well as we go forward here. But this is a really, really important one. And it can help you to find out more things about the target. Now, with the tool Nmap, you are able to use Nmap to do a reverse lookup. For example, if we do Nmap-SL and we give it that same range, now let's just redo this command with Nmap. So I can do that and give Nmap the same range through 254 and it'll come back and give me the same info basically, right? Like I still get the fully qualified names and I get the other things that didn't resolve to anything as well, but it's not easy, hard to clean that up, right? We know how to use grep, so watch this. Let's write that to a file. Looks like that. So what am I gonna grep for? I'm gonna grep for msstate.edu. And boom, now I've got literally the same information that we got with DNS Recon, because guess what? Reverse lookup, that technique is not owned by DNS Recon. Nmap can do reverse lookup. You can even do reverse lookup just using something like DIG or NS lookup. So these are tools, DIG, NS lookup, um, DNS Recon, who is? These are common tools that we use in the process of enumerating and getting information out of DNS. So it's definitely something that you should think about. Now, one of the things that I'll be showing you in the next series is how we can exploit that, you know, some interesting ways to exploit it. And we'll be doing that through a technique that we call DNS cache poisoning. And it is something that you may see on some exams that you might take in the future. So hopefully you find some value in this little tutorial on DNS and how we can get information from it. And I look forward to seeing you in the next section where we will look at some ways to exploit based on that. Thanks for watching.